lovelies welcome back welcome to my Osso Buco video all right what is Osso Buco? Osso Buco is an Italian dish in Italy they use veal here in Australia we normally use beef and what it is is a beef shank cut like you would cut a loaf of bread but nice and thick so if you wanted to go to your butcher get two kilo of beef shanks and ask the butcher to cut them for you and you just give the end bits to the dog or if you're like me you go to the IGA they sometimes already have them cut for you like that but if you've got a butcher in there you can just grab your shanks and ask the butcher to cut them up for you so for this recipe we need one and a half kilos of cross cut shanks okay so next thing you want to work out is what you want to cook it in so I always cook it in my cast iron casserole dish on my stove top now you can cook it in the oven and you can also cook it on the coals with your camp oven. If you're going to cook it on the coals, I would have coals underneath but I wouldn't put any on top. So what I normally do is I'll, I'll do the coals three times. So the first time I'll put it on my little patch of coals, half an hour later I'll go to stir it and I'll add a few more coals. Half an hour later I'll go to stir it and I'll add a few more coals. That way you can constantly keep it hot but not have it roaring. Alright, so we've got one and a half kilos of our cross cut shanks. So what we're going to need is a little bit of plain flour to dust them in. We're going to need a couple of tablespoons of olive oil to fry them in. We need two medium onions and we're going to chop them up. We need either four cloves of fresh garlic, you know, squashed, or just a jar of garlic like I always use. Two cans, now they're supposed to be 425 grams of diced tomatoes. These are 400 gram ones so they're just going to have to do. Half a cup of dry white wine. Now I'm not really into using the dry white wines, so instead I'm going to use an extra half a cup of chicken stock instead of the wine. So we need chicken stock as well, and we need one dry bay leaf. All right, we just need one of them. Now we need one tablespoon of fresh chopped thyme. If you don't have it or you're at camping, use the dry stuff. One tablespoon of it. We need one tablespoon of fresh chopped oregano. Same thing, if you don't have it, use one tablespoon of dry oregano. And we need two tablespoons of chopped fresh parsley. And if you don't have it, use the dry stuff. Okay, that is all we need to do this, folks. So let's get cooking. Alrighty, now we've chopped everything up, we're ready to go. So the next thing we wanna do is get a bit of flour out. Um, to dust our meat in and get out a frying pan. Grab out our pan, heat it up on medium. A couple of tablespoons of olive oil in there. Cover them in a bit of flour. And then we lift them up and bang them around a bit and get the excess off. So braising, what braising means is just browning your meat first. Alright, so once we've done that, we're going to put them in. And all we're going to do is just brown them on both sides. We don't want to cook them. We just want to brown them. Now that we've browned them, we put them into our pot. Now keep our pan hot. Straight into our pan goes our onion. And you either want four cloves of garlic crushed in there, or just four heaped teaspoons of the jar stuff like I'm going to do. And we just want to cook it for a couple of minutes until the onion goes see-through. And then we whack it in with our meat. Oh, mate, there is nothing I like more than the smell of onion and garlic cooking. Oh. All right, we've got it all in the pot. Next thing we do is we pour both our cans of undrained tomatoes, the whole can, in there. Now, if you're going to put your white wine in, you'd put half a cup of dry white wine in now. And because I'm not going to use wine, and you'd put one cup of chicken stock in. Because I'm not going to use the wine, I'm going to put one and a half cups of chicken stock in. In with your bay leaf, your thyme, dry or fresh, your oregano, dry or fresh, <laughs> and your parsley, dry or fresh. Oh yeah, baby. All right, I'm just going to get a spoon and just sort of mix it around a little bit. Now, if you were to do this in your oven, you want to heat your preheat your oven up first at 180. Um, if you're doing it on the coals obviously you want to get your coals ready hey yum how awesome does it look before it's even cooked <laughs> all right now we put our lids on now we either stick them in the oven for an hour and a half and i would stir it once every half an hour 
or I'm gonna stick it on my stove top and we bring it up to a simmer and we simmer it with the lid on for an hour and a half. Oh my God, mate, it's been an hour and a half. It smells unbelievable in here. So now what we do, whether it's on the stove top or in the oven or on your coals, we now take the lid off. We leave the lid off now for the rest of the cook. And what we do is we just keep simmering like this for up to an hour. This is where I would put my mashed potato on if I was doing mash or uh, your polentas or whatever else you wanted to do with it. Or my favorite is some damper. Oh, we've got half an hour to go, to go and it is totally getting there. Now I'm sitting there thinking, it's an oily cut anyway, so it's a little bit oily than you would normally ha have a casserole. But I was like, why is it so oily? And I know why. What I forgot is that once you've browned your meat in your frying pan, before you put it in your pot, you're supposed to put it on paper towel or absorbent towel and absorb up all the oil from when we just browned them, like duh. So don't forget to do that first before you put it in your pot. It will still be a little bit oily, but not like that. There we have it, my friends. Hour later, also buco. Chuck a bit of fresh parsley on there. I can't help myself. I have to show you how it pulls apart. Oh, we just had an awesome dinner. Two forks. It's, it's sticky. It's oh, baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Gotta love you and leave you. Bye.